So there we go, the frame's out. I have uh, taken the string heights, I've taken the stringing pattern, I've taken the original pin size. We've got an original pin size of 6.9 by 55. The down bearing, when I measured it, was about zero, which is uh, where the strings are pressing on this bridge here. Uh, it should be about two to three, but it's um, it was actually gone altogether. So uh, the, the soundboard is definitely um, collapsed and you can definitely tell that it needs some repair look at all these lovely splits we've got here split 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 got some really nice ones there look at that jumping between the green and the wood there. nasty that's all gonna have to be repaired it's probably going to split more by the time we're finished with it uh, took all the string lengths the original string lengths as well um, so that we can figure out a stringing pattern for it. Uh, the plank is not as bad as I thought, although that there is very nasty. So this piece of plank is definitely going to have to be replaced if it's not just the capping, because on this one there is a capping, and it might just be that. We're taking the capping off, and we're going to have a look at the wood underneath, see what it's uh, like under there. It might need a complete... <clears throat> new bit of wood inset in or a new rest plank. We'll see what the damage is. First job is to clean this sandboard down with a bit of water so we can analyse it better and we're going to take a photo, a high quality photo of that Beckstein decal, 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 however you pronounce it, uh, transfer. <laughs> and we're going to get another one printed off for it. So, yeah, all good stuff. Oh, yes, and uh, this has uh, yeah that's definitely um slightly buggered so we've got to get that sorted as well so lots of work lots of fun <laughs> awesome right, another thing to mention with this piano is uh the pins on the bridge the pins here now on these on these first two sections here the top treble and the the low treble, they're actually the pins aligned exactly at right angles to the uh, the direction of the strings. But after this break here, they suddenly go off at a different angle, uh, and that was done at one period in the history of Beckstein's, uh, as well as a couple of other pianos. Uh, what they did is they staggered the pin slightly so that um, each string of that particular um, note had a slightly different speaking length so that when they were tuned to the same frequency you got a slightly different tonal characteristic of each individual string. Uh, what we're doing on this piano is we're going to take those pins out and straighten them up. So we'll see how that goes. So what we've got to do is I'm going to take all these pins out. I've started taking them out already, actually. They just pull out there. We're going to take off. There's a thin capping that comes down to there. You can just barely see it on this. But it's There's a cap in there. We're going to remove that capping, put a new piece of capping on the top, carve the new capping with the straight pins, and knock some new pins into that. And then hopefully that will give us a nice point of contact on the bridge. There we go, that's the uh, bridge routed out. I didn't want to make a video while I was doing it because I, there's no way I'm holding this beast with one hand and trying to do it at the same time. But there you go, that's my uh, little jig that I've rigged up myself. Two on one side, one on the other. So that you've got three points of contact so it's uh, flat at all times. Run that up and down the board, there you go, the bridge has now been taken down by six millimetres, ready for its new capping. So there we go, capping, next job. Right, so we are now making a new capping for the bridge, there's the template for the bit we've taken off, uh, we've, got a, we've got some nice piece of maple here and we're now going to cut it to size and make the top capping.
Right, there you go. That's the top of the bridge cut out. So that can be put on the top of there. Slightly proud, obviously, all the way around the edge. Get that fixed on there like that. And there you go, your bridge has got a capping on. And then it can just be flattened off there, taking the side off. Jobs are good. And also, since last time I actually filmed this bridge, we've actually plugged all the uh, plugged all the holes up, so that uh, the new pins, the, the bridge pins, when they go in, are not uh, trying to follow the hole of the original uh, that's already in there. So yeah, that's it. So we'll uh, get some uh, clamps and clamp that on. And uh, there we go, new capped bridge. Supplementary video about the uh, music desk of uh, the Bextime we're working on. Um, just a general observation before I take it to pieces. Um, screws missing out of there. They're turning in there, as in the you know they just keep going round and round and round with no end to them. That side even worse damage. Um, two missing there, where they've fallen out. The whole hinge loose, and uh, general bumps and scrapes as there always is on a music desk. But uh, I thought I'd sort of document that before I took it to pieces. Uh, so I'm just doing a little bit of uh, woodwork at the moment uh, while we're waiting for some glue to dry. So, yep. Still on the music desk. Just did that. Ooh, this one. Bad one, innit? You know, people often say to us, why do we you, you still use animal glue, which is the older style of glue for, getting, for gluing stuff onto pianos? And basically, because if you wet it or heat it, it becomes liquid again. And doing this, look, I soaked this about half an hour ago. Uh, I've just come back in uh, after my dinner. I can now just grab one end and it just gives up. On the other side as well. There you go. No mess. I just peeled that off as well and then I suddenly thought oh, I should be making a video of that. Uh, now all that needs now is a knife running across the surface like that and it's completely clean. If that had been glued on with um, PVA or another modern type glue that would have been an absolute nightmare to get off and it, we would have partially destroyed the wood as well but as it is because it's animal glue that will now be a nice flat surface with little to no work and it's same with action parts as well. Modern pianos have very often the parts are glued on with PVA and it's irritating because it just spends it takes so much time to take it off whereas a properly maintained glue pot works just as well as PVA all you've got to do is switch it on half an hour before you need to use it and as long as you keep it well maintained it glues if not better than modern glues and convenience look at that all I've got to do is just peel it off Brilliant. There's these as well, but I think I didn't soak these until just a little bit later, so... Oh no, there you go, look. Straight off, I'm going to have to hold that while I pull it. Straight off, and nice and clean going. And the wood wasn't exactly uh, spotless before, but... Uh, I mean, can you imagine trying to get that off of the inside of those grooves? and tr still keep that nice edge along there. It's bloody irritating. So yeah, there you go. Animal glue for the win. Yet another side note about the music desk. Um, remember I was just saying about the, uh, the back being damaged with the screw holes being missing or turning or something. At some point in this piano's life, someone has taken the old screws out. <laughs> <coughs> Ooh, bless me, which were turning and decided to put some bigger screws in to compensate for the turning screws which has actually caused damage to the other side where the screws have actually tried to come out the front of the veneer. More problems to fix. Whoever did that in the past, you're a pillock.